Good morning. Welcome everyone. And thank you for joining us for our first 2023 live CTR coding break. Our presenter today is Melissa Chapman. Um, Melissa is one of our quality consultants here at Registry Partners, and she is a frequent presenter. Melissa will be discussing the 2023 major updates this morning. So I'll turn it over to Melissa. Thanks, Carrie. Just... Okay, so we, we have a jam-packed 15 minutes, so I'm going to jump right in. Um, I'm, I might go a little bit fast, but <laughs> we're going to talk about um, the HACC 9th edition new sites, the grade manual version 3.0 the solid tumor rules updates, the ICDO 3.2 update, the store manual 2023, the SSDI v3.0 manual, which is the version 3.0, and the SEER program coding decision manual issued in 2023. Okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to get my Ugh, I can't get it to go away. I'm sorry. <laughs> there we go. So new for the AJCC TNM staging, a ninth edition has been released for the following sites, the anus, appendix, and the brain and the spinal cord. And we will use these new manuals with cases diagnosed January 1st, 2023 and forward. The AJCC eighth edition chapters for these sites still apply for the 2018 to 2022 diagnosis years, except for the cervix uteri, which has a ninth edition available for 2021 diagnosis years. The grade manual version 3.0 is for use with cases diagnosed 2018 and forward and only after the registry software conversion to the NACER data standards B23. Within the grade manual, there's a new note applicable for solid tumors. In the general grade coding instructions for all schemas, a priority order has been added for the assignment of grade. Synoptic report, including the CAP protocol, is the first priority, followed by a pathology report and final diagnosis as a second priority, and then a physician statement of grade if no other info is available as a third priority. Some changes to the current grade manual for tables nine and 10 for the heart, mediastinum, and pleura, Kaposi sarcoma, orbital sarcoma, retroperitoneum, soft tissue abdomen and thoracic, soft tissue head and neck, soft tissue trunk and extremities, soft tissue other and soft tissue rare. A new note was added indicating code one may be assigned if grade is stated as low grade only. Also for the same sites, grade H may be assigned if stated to be high grade only. For default grades, you must still meet the criteria for assigning clinical and pathologic grade per the instructions. You would code the WHO grading system for selected tumors of the CNS as noted in the AJCC 8th edition table 72-2 when the WHO grade is not documented in the record. So for example, for sites such as the cerebral meninges, you would code a clinical grade of one, or for glioblastoma, you would code a grade of four clinically. The solid tumor rules have been released with a 2023 update. These rules apply for cases diagnosed 2018 and forward, with the exception of melanoma of the skin, which for diagnosis 2007 to 2021, use those MPH 2007 rules. The general equivalent or equal term section added a note indicating that no evidence of disease or NED or disease-free are equivalent terms. And how to use the solid tumor rules section, other sites information was updated. A primary using other sites MPH rules diagnosed before January 1st, 2023 and a subsequent primary also covered in the other sites diagnosed January 1st, 2023 or later, the abstractor will use the 2023 rules. 
Also updated within the solid tumor rules, multiple primary rules do not apply to tumors described as metastases, and an example was added to the manual for additional assistance with that. The timing rules uh, section was also updated. Once a patient has been diagnosed with metastatic disease, whether at diagnosis or later, they will never be considered NED. And finally, the other site rule section was updated for 2023. These rules apply for diagnosis years January 1st, 2023 and forward only. So if other site diagnosis is uh, prior to 2023, you would use the previous version of the rules. For coding histology of liver and intrahepatic bile duct primaries, there's a very helpful, helpful clarification made in the other sites chapter of the 2023 solid tumor rules. This is located under table nine if you're looking for it. The new coding um, states that intrahepatic cholangiocarcinomas are almost exclusively adenocarcinomas and often diagnosed by cytology. Additional diagnostic molecular tests and clinical collaborations are needed to define a diagnosis of cholangiocarcinoma. Clinicians often indicate clinical diagnosis of cholangiocarcinoma without pathologic confirmation. Per histology coding rules, pathology and cytology have priority over clinical or physician's diagnosis. If the diagnosis of cholangiocarcinoma is made on a resected specimen, then code this histology. So to put it plainly, code cholangiocarcinoma only if the path or the cytology states cholangiocarcinoma. The 2023 ICDO 3.2 update guidelines include comprehensive tables listing changes to ICDO 3.2, including new ICDO codes, terminology, and reportability changes effective for cases diagnosed January 1, 2023 and forward. The 2023 updates represent changes identified in recently published 5th edition WHO classification of tumor books. Included in the guidelines are instructions for using the tables together with ICDO 3.2. This update includes important behavior information on pilocytic astrocytoma in the central nervous system and other sites. Major changes include behavior codes, change, uh, changes to the CNS neoplasm and reportable terminology. The 2023 update includes five new ICDO codes or terms, one histology change behavior that is uh, reportable, and 41 new preferred or related terms. Again, beginning January 1st, 2023, all cases diagnosed with pilocytic astrocytoma or that juvenile pilocytic astrocytoma are related terminology or, and related terminology are to be reported as a behavior one. They'll be no longer collected with malignant behavior three. Now the ICDO code 9421 behavior three will be valid for diagnosis of high grade astrocytoma with pyloid features or high gap. Coding instructions are included in the remarks section. At the NACER site, you will find both the table one for the numeric listing, the table two for the alpha listing, and an addendum to the 2022 ICDO 3.2, and they're all available for download. The store manual for 2023 has some major changes. There are some new data items, but you will also see slight changes to the tobacco use smoking status field. Also, the RX hospital surgery and RX summary surgery are replacing the previous NACER items 670 and 1290. Instructions are to leave these fields blank for 2003 to 2022 diagnosis years and complete the NACER items of 670 utilizing the previous store manual for the appropriate diagnosis year and same with 1290. Several data items have been removed, such as the surgical procedure of primary site. All instructions have been changed to reflect the new surgical codes for diagnosis years 2023 and forward. All instructions have been changed to reflect the new surgical codes for that year, as well as the removal of the date flags, such as the date of birth or the date of first contact. All changes in 2023 um, 
for the pi reds, bi reds, and li reds, uh, it does state that they're not reportable. I'm sorry, alone are not reportable for the COC, but pi reds, bi reds, and li reds confirmed with a biopsy or a physician statement are reportable to the COC. Uh, the data diagnosis is the date of the pi reds, bi reds, and li reds imaging. The biopsy makes it reportable to the COC. However, the date of the diagnosis is the date of the imaging. So we have to have a microscopic confirmation of malignancy. Appendix A surgery codes change from two-digit numeric codes to the alphanumeric codes, beginning with the letters and then followed by the three digits. All 2023 site-specific surgery codes begin with a letter A, except for the skin, which starts with the letter B, to indicate that there was a significant change in coding. Something to take note of, melanoma surgery coding is greatly simplified, and the surgery coding is no longer based on margin status documented in the pathology report. So for example, B200 series would be an excisional biopsy, NOS, or a shave biopsy, punch biopsy, an elliptical biopsy. And a wide excision is coded within the B500 series, but the margins do not have any uh, bearing on that code. Appendix M was added. This is a CTR guide to coding melanoma of the skin. It looks like the CTR's Guide to Coding Radiation Treatment, if you were to take a look, and it's formatted in the same manner. And finally, code clarifications were made for race coding um, and radiation treatment coding. There were new SSDIs in, for version 3.0. Uh, there can also be found at the SEER RSA site if you're looking at that. P16 existing is an existing SSDI, but it was added to the ANUS of version 9 schema. Histology subtype appendix version 9 schema. Also new is the SSDI clinical margins for melanoma for January 1st, 2023 and forward. The clinical melanoma margin is captured separately under this new SSDI. The clinical surgical margin should be coded from the operative report, not from the PATH report. And no longer required would be, for 2023 cases, would be the ER and the PR all red scores. So continue to collect these uh, for pre-2023 cases because they are reportable. But if your facility wishes to continue to collect them after 2023, then you still can, but they're not required. Changes to the SSDI manual general instructions. There's now a priority order for SSDIs. So where there's now an addendum or amendment or corrections that are not incorporated into the initial synoptic report that takes priority, then the synoptic report would take second priority. Pathology reports would, with the final diagnosis would be third priority. And then a physician statement would be last priority. General rules versus SSDI specific rules were clarified. Unless instructions for specific tissue test states otherwise, you would record the highest value, positive versus negative or actual numerical value, obtained from any tissue based on examination. So the biopsy, surgical resection, or bone marrow. You follow the site-specific rules over the general rules when applicable. So if there is an SSDI uh, chapter for that particular reporting site, then you would follow those rules. And then lastly, there was a change to the FIGO stage SSDI instructions for GIN primaries. The FIGO stage must be stated by a managing physician and not coded based off of the PATH report. And finally, there were several 2023 changes to this year program coding and staging manual. Reportable malignant and non-malignant terms and codes were added for the 2023 diagnosis years. All date flags were discontinued, starting with cases diagnosed 2023. These data items have been removed from the 2023 SEER program manual, and you can actually find them in previous versions if you're reporting earlier cases. 
Laterality table was updated. Some sites were removed from paired organs, so be sure to review this table. There is a summary of changes document available at the link on the slide, which describes each change, page number, and what was changed. The new site-specific data items that were added um, are listed in the manual. And two data items are no longer available, which are the all red score for ER and PR. Data items that were added to the manual in section seven in the first course of therapy, surgery of primary site were updated. In section eight, follow up information, no patient contact flag is a new field that was added. And it's typically for central registries. Several data items were deleted from the manual and I would recommend reviewing the list for specific items. These were mostly just date flags and modifications were made to the race coding and tobacco use smoking status fields in this manual as well. Appendices were added and modified, including the updated surgery codes. So they also have the exact same surgery codes, uh, but SEER does provide more explanation for the surgery coding in their manuals. Also notable are the updates to the SEER EOD fields, SEER Summary Stage Manual, which is still 2018, but a newer version 3.0 is now available. And the SEER Heme database had some notes updated, but there were no major changes to any of the coding. Now I know that was a ton, ton of information. <laughs> Um, and it was probably an hour's worth of information jammed into 15 minutes. But uh, I, the information is accessible to everyone out there on the internet, and I definitely recommend you all take a look.